Hey, welcome back. I say I'm going to be doing another paint with me. Um, this time I'm doing a Q&A. Last time I asked you guys to ask me a bunch of questions. I know it's been over a month. I've just been very busy um, with various things that I may or may not be able to talk about in the future. Um, and I've just been rec um, recording a lot with my declutter series, and so this one kind of got put on the back burner, on the back burner just a little bit, just because I really wanted to take the time to be able to go through all the questions and have dedicated time to really answer these questions. So it's been a while. I apologize, but I did go through all the questions. I'm going to be answering every single question. Um, you guys came up with some good questions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and answer those while I'm painting my nails and then I'll answer as many as I can while I'm doing my nails and then whatever questions um, at the end I will come back and talk to you guys in front of the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around and get started. Okay, so I already have my base coats on. I'm using two at the moment trying to double up to prevent staining. I'm trying to grow the stains out. So I'm using this Nail Aid um, Keratin 3 Day Growth. And then I'm using the oily calcium shield on top. Okay, so I have a couple different categories of questions that you guys asked. Most of them are nail related, so I thought I would do the nail questions first. And then after that, there's a few nursing questions and then just some miscellaneous questions. Okay, so for the base, I'm using Zoya's Sawyer. This is so pretty. I'm so excited about this one. I can't wait for you guys to see the topper that I'm, I'm gonna be using. Okay, so the first question is, how did you first have a love for nail polish? Um, I don't know, honestly, so when I was a kid, I would paint my nails. Um, I would have like, you know, the cheap, I don't know if it was, oops, I don't know if it was LA Colors or whatever the brand was, but I would always just have, you know, like the cheap um, drugstore polish or my mom would buy me um, like a six pack from the dollar store. I'm pretty sure it was LA Colors. I don't know if LA Colors was around back then, but it was like the equivalent. And I just always liked having my nails done. And then when I got older, maybe around like 15 years ago, when I discovered YouTube, I started off watching um, beauty videos. And then slowly I started learning that there is nail polish videos out there. And that's when I discovered you know, going down the rabbit hole of indies and I just went crazy and just fell in love with nail polish and started learning how to do combos and, and I just really loved, or still do, the artistic outlet of nail polish. Okay, um, there's a few questions talking about my brand. I think I'll leave those towards the end. Um, what does your partner think of your nail videos? Um, honestly, he doesn't care. Um, he knows it's just a hobby for me. He doesn't make fun of me. He doesn't, you know, one way or another, he just, you know, I guess doesn't really have much of an interest. He doesn't make fun of me for it. Um, I don't know that he necessarily understands it, but he doesn't care. Um, how long do you typically wear a mani? Um, it depends. If it's a mani that I really, really love, I will wear it for several days. Um, basically until I either have a twin mani planned with someone that I need to take it off and you know do my twin mani, or if it's really starting to chip badly and I, I just can't stand looking at um, chip nail polish. So anywhere from one to four to five days. I am trying to switch out my manis a lot more frequently because um, I'm just trying to get use out of my polish. I'm trying to get through my untrieds. Um, but if I really love a mani, then I'll tend to wear it for a couple more days. Um, how did you get into indie nail polish? It was about, I guess, I don't know, maybe like 15 years ago. It was definitely when we were still living in New Jersey. Um, that's when I started getting into YouTube and um, started watching nail videos. But back then, there was like a five, it was five of them. There was a group of five nail ladies that were like, the nail people to watch. So it was Just Face 90, um, Amy Baby 90, someone named uh, Lin Lindsay, Lindsay Does Nails, I think was her channel. She's no longer, like she completely deleted her channel a long time ago. Um, Miss Holly Berries, and sorry, I'm trying to, my camera's a little further out now with my new camera setup, my new tripod setup, and so I have to 
be out of frame for a second. Um, Miss Holly Berries and then Zenora. I don't know how I discovered them. I think I was just Googling or, you know, YouTubing um, nail polish videos. And I came across them and especially Just Face 90. She's the one that um, swatched back then. She's the one that swatched all the nail polish brands. So through those five, that's when I learned about indie nail polish. Okay, sorry, this new setup, I don't, I don't like it very much. Um, I'm not sure exactly how far away to keep my, the tripod, it's got a, a much longer arm than the previous one that I was using. Um, and I don't know, it's hard to stay in frame a lot of times. Um, let's see, would you ever consider doing a Skittle Manny with various designs? Um, honestly, probably not. I really love the idea of Skittle Manny's. I think it's fun. I love when I see other people on YouTube, um, on like Instagram, doing Skittle Manny's. I think it's so pretty and it's so fun and it's a creative way to use a lot of your polish at once. And then of course, like nail art, I'm fascinated by nail art and like stamping and stuff and I keep trying to do it. I just never have the time to really do it. Um, oh, look how pretty that is, you guys. I think this will be good in two coats. Um, I don't know, I just never have the time to really do it. Um, as much as I say, oh, I'm gonna be doing nail art and doing more stamping, I just never find myself actually doing it. And as fun as I think Skittles are, and as much as I love doing like combos and you know combining colors, I never seem to really do Skittles either. Although I really should, but I just, I just don't. So I would consider it, yes, I think it would be fun. Just realistically, am I ever going to really do it? Probably not. Can you talk about the longevity of polish and do they last? Do the flakies melt into the polish and change the color? Okay, so I will say that creams last much longer than any polishes that have any kind of components in them because um, it's just a cream in a base. Um, when you start adding components, did I do this one already? No. Um, when you start adding components into a base, you have to use a different base. You have to use a glitter base, and glitter bases tend to be thicker so that they can, you know, suspend the ingredients. And because it's thicker, the base is thicker, um, the polish itself starts thickening up a lot faster. So the longevity of creams is much better than flakies. Um, if you have anything with flakies, Flakies, I would, shimmers, I would say, have the next best longevity. Um, I don't know, I'm assuming you mean longevity as in, like, not on your nails, but in the bottle. So that's how I'm explaining my answer. Um, shimmers, because shimmers don't need a thick suspension base. They can do just, you know, a soft suspension base. Um, and then after that would be flakies. And then the worst ones for longevity are glitters. Um, sparse glitters are okay. Um, but if you have any kind of like chunky glitters or like crellies with you know lots of glitters those ones have the worst longevity and you have to restore them more frequently you can restore either with restoration drops if they're just starting to go bad and get a little bit gloopy you can use restoration drops eventually they're going to be so thick that you have to actually restore them with base nail polish base i do have a video um, called tips and tricks from i think it's been like two years by now where I talk about that and I show you how to do that. So if you want more in-depth detail on that, um, go check out that video. And then um, do the flakies melt into the polish and change the color. Um, if you have platinum flakies or glitters, those 100% do tarnish and bleed into, they don't bleed, but they tarnish. Um, so they completely change color and they change the color of your polish. Some glitters and some flakies will actually change the polish. Um, it's called, um, you need, when you're making polish, you need solvent or, you know, if you're buying polish, they should be using um, high quality ingredients that are solvent resistant, which means that they don't dissolve into the polish. Um, but some glitters, eventually, no matter what kind of ingredients you're, you're using, you know, good ingredients, they are going to end up kind of bleeding into the base and then you're gonna have a tinted base. So yes, they do and can bleed over time. All right, you guys, that's two coats. 
This is really pretty, I love this. I'm gonna let this dry for a minute, answer some questions, and then I'll do the topper. And then a lot of these questions I think I'll end up just answering on camera because my nails aren't taking that long to, to do. Um, let's see, are the brands, are there brands or formulas that last longer? Um, I can't speak about for on the nails because everyone's nails, maybe I should do this so that you guys have something to look at. Um, everyone's nails, you know, their nail chemistry is gonna react differently for, you know, nail polish. As far as longevity in the bottles, um, brands that I noticed that last really well for me, that, you know, I have some that are 10, 12 years old and they're still going strong, are OPIs. Um, Essie's last a really, really long time for me. Um, I know for me, um, I have really old glam polishes and ion peas and they've, you know, they've been lasting for a long time. Ones that I will say that do not last whatsoever. The worst brands that I've ever seen as far as longevity. Um, number one is Native War Paints. That was one of the very first um, indie brands that I ever got into because that was back then just face 90 heavily. Um, swatched for native war paints. Their polishes do not last at all. Like I had polishes that completely, the glitters completely dissolved, the flakies disappeared, they thickened up, they got, they like not even just thickened up, but they thinned out in weird formulas, like in weird ways. So native war paint does not last. And then the other one um, that their formulas aren't the best as far as longevity is actually Dollish Polish. Um, what is your experience with glitters, flakies, and creams? I think I kind of touched on that. Um, I don't know if you mean as far as like consumerism or making them. Um, but I can touch on that when, I'm, when I talk about my brand a little more. Um, I love creams. Um, creams are just so beautiful and I really love toppers. Um, I think if you have a whole bunch of creams, like every color you know in the rainbow, and then you just have a bunch of beautiful glitter flaky toppers, that's what I'm most into right now. Um, as far as my experience, um, glitters, um, I've never really liked chunky glitters in crullies or toppers. I've just never been a fan of them. Lately, I am starting to get into more glitter toppers. Um, mostly my favorite toppers have always been like sparse glitters or flakies. I am kind of starting to get into a little more of the chunky toppers, but I gotta say, I don't always love them. So. I do have experience with the gamut. I love flakies, I love creams, I love shimmers. I don't necessarily love thick, chunky glitters. What got you into nail polish? I, I think I already talked about that. Um, just always loving it as a kid, you know, for the pretty artistic side of it, you know, just having color on my nails. And then as I got older, YouTube really got me into it. Do you think, Oh, this was an interesting question. Um, do you think those in the polish or panning community, which is um, those that like pan their eyeshadows, their makeup, um, are possibly neurodivergent in a way? That's really interesting. Um, okay, so I think there's different categories of people that collect things. Um, the most extreme obviously are hoarders and that is definitely a mental illness. I don't just mean people that, you know, like us that collect nail polish and you know, we don't wanna get rid of it because you know, it's, um, you know, limited edition. I don't think that's necessarily neurodivergent. What I think is neurodivergent are those that can't get rid of anything and they collect and hoard everything, like literal trash those people definitely have a mental illness. Those of us that are just <clears throat> having, you know, a hobby that we love nail polish or, you know, we love makeup. There are people that, you know, collect shoes, people that, you know, collect handbags, um, you know, people that collect artwork. I don't think that's neurodivergent. I think when it becomes a problem and it starts to affect your life, then maybe that's possibly, you know, slight, you know, mental health issues or, you know, neurodivergent. But I think just having a healthy hobby where it's not hurting you, I don't really think that's neurodivergent. Do you find people in your life judge you for your 
collection and its size? Um, I think the people in my life don't necessarily judge me. Um, like my husband, he doesn't judge me. He doesn't care as long as it, you know, because I keep everything in my closet. It's not taken over the house. He doesn't judge me. He, um, yeah, I, I don't think he cares. You know, I'm, I'm using my fun money to spend on my hobby. So, you know, he doesn't really care about that. Um, and it's not taking over the house or anything. So he doesn't care. Um, I don't think my kids care. No one in my family really cares. I think maybe some people don't quite understand it. Um, but um, no one really cares. Like, I've never had anyone say anything to me like, why do you have so much polish? Um, I think people in the community care. Um, I have gotten a lot of comments recently like, why do you have so much? Like, you don't need so much, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think it's really easy for people to not understand, like it's just nail polish. But if you think about it, everyone has some kind of collection. Everyone has a hobby. Everyone has money that they sink into. Like, you know, some men, you know, buy expensive cars or, you know, tinker around in their garages. Like, I don't know. Um, so to answer your question, for me personally, no one really judges me. However, I could understand, like I wouldn't talk about this with my coworkers. Like I wouldn't tell my coworkers that I have, you know, like over a thousand nail polishes because I don't think they would understand and they probably would judge me. Um, what influenced you to start your brand? Oh, that's going to be a separate question. I'll answer my brand questions last. Um, what is the best way to thin out your toppers? Um, so like I said, I had that video called tips and tricks. The best way for me to thin out my toppers is to use a nail polish base. Um, I get my bases from TKB Trading. They have what's called a glamour base, which is for glitters, and then they have a luster base, which is for creams. So for me, for my toppers, I thin them out in two different ways, either because they've just gotten thick and gloopy and they need to be restored, or I thin them out because I want them to be less dense and I like my toppers to be more sparse. Um, so go check, I'll link the video down below, um, the video called Tips and Tricks, and I show you exactly how I do it. Um, any tips on using toppers where I use a topper, I can still see the under color at the cuticle and it doesn't look cohesive. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. So um, polish, it's really easy for polish to get all the way up to the top because you know your entire brush is coated in polish. So if you push the brush all the way up to the cuticle like I do, then you're covering the cuticle. With toppers, the entire brush is not covered in glitter. It's covered in base, and then there's glitter, you know, throughout um, on the brush. Uh, for instance, let me, okay. I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm saying, but I have this topper here. So you can see that the entire brush is not necessarily covered in glitter. There's base, and then there's, you know, emptiness where it's just base and not glitter. So for me, um, I, don't I don't necessarily do this, but this is just if it really bothers you, what you can do. So after you've put your base on, if you still have too much room at the top, you can do kind of like a placement of glitter where you just kind of um, wipe it off a little bit and then just at the top kind of dab it on a little bit. Or what I would recommend is if you know this happens to you every single time, I would probably dab on at the top first and then go in with a full coat and go downwards. That way you're not, it's gonna, the second pass will kind of smooth it out. Um, or you could even do, if it's, um, you could do like, um, if the glitters are big enough to do this with, you can get an orange stick and you can do a little bit of glitter placement with an orange stick as well. Um, let's see, how long have you had your polish? Okay, so three questions about my brand. Um, first one was pros and cons of starting your brand and then what influenced you to start your brand and how long have you had your polish business? Okay, so I've had my polish brand since February 2021. Um, what started me was in 2020, my son was um, practicing for a big Boy Scout hiking trip that he was gonna have. It was um, like a, a two week hiking trip, hiking over 200 miles. Um, and so to practice, we started going on long walks together. So in 2020, 
I don't know, like the beginning of the year, I think, we started going on long walks with each other. We would walk anywhere from like two up to 10 miles um, just walking. And so we would talk a lot. We would talk about all kinds of stuff, just really enjoying each other's company. And then one day we were talking something about nail polish. I don't know. Um, I, I honestly don't know how it came up, but we started talking about polish. And he was like, well, mom, he's like, you should just start your own nail polish brand. And at first it was just a joke. And then the more we talked, um, he's like, yeah, you should just do it, mom. He's like, you know, you should make your own polish and then sell polish. And then it turned into, it wasn't just a joke and it was something that I really started considering. And then we started talking about it together, coming up with ideas. And I started um, researching, I watched I will say this, so there's not a lot of YouTube videos out there that tell you how to start nail polish, how to make nail polish. Really, there's a lot of videos that tell you how to make nail polish using like old eyeshadows and you just break them up and put them into clear nail polish. But there's not a lot of videos out there telling you how to actually like really make nail polish. So I just had to do a lot of Googling, doing a lot of research. I spent a ton of money on ingredients that were no, no good that they, they weren't solvent resistant even though they said solvent resistant and so they completely instant like instantly bled into the the base um, so i did a lot of research um, my initial hope was to have a halloween collection in 2020 because halloween is my favorite season i love halloween um, but i just wasn't able to get everything in order um, the glitters that i had intended on using were not good they bled um, i was having difficulty with my labels um, figuring out the right label mechanism. I wasted a lot of money buying different labels. Um, and then finally, I was able to get everything in order um, for February. So I ended up doing my first collection was my pets collection, which I'm actually really happy I did. I really love my pets collection. Um, and that was in February, 2021. So how long have I had my business? It's been a little over three years now. Um, what was the other question? What influenced you to start your brand? Really, my son. Uh, my son influenced me to start my brand. Um, and then the pros and cons of starting your own brand. Okay, so the pros are being, um, being creative. I love being creative. You guys know I love making combos. I love combining colors. So being creative and getting to experiment and play and come up with you know whatever I want that's really fun i love doing that um the cons are uh, there's a lot of cons um one big con for me is getting the formulas correct and getting them good enough to where i feel confident enough to um i'm sorry i should have i'm not even paying attention i should have started doing my topper um is getting them to a good enough formula where I even feel confident enough to sell them. I have a ton, a ton, a ton of polishes that I've made over the last few years. Oh, by the way, you guys look at this topper. Um, this is Fancy Gloss Pastel Teal Mix. I did this on a color wheel, on a swatch, um, you know, nail wheel. And this is so beautiful, I'm so excited. Um, so cons are getting the formulas right. Um, I've messed up a lot of formulas. I've struggled with a lot of formulas. Um, I can't quite get Crowley's right. There are certain toppers, like chunky glitter toppers that I just can't get right. You guys look how beautiful that is. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, another con is having to do all the labels. Um, I have a software, not a software, but um, I have a website where I make my labels with and then I print them out and you have to I actually now started um, paying to have, I buy my labels now, at least for the bottles, but I still have to print all the labels for the polish name. And that's very time consuming. Another big con for me is, um, how do I phrase this, is, uh, I can't think of the word, but Putting yourself out there, it's really hard to put yourself out there um, and then to be rejected. I don't think rejected is the right word. Um, 
because you know not everyone's gonna love everything that I make obviously but there are some times where I work really hard for a collection and I'm really proud and I love the polishes and then you know not a single polish will sell and then there are other times where I sell more than I ever intended to sell but the ones where I don't sell anything that's kind of hard it's um, hard to put yourself out there and then to not um, have it go off the way you want it to um, and then for me also the really hard part is naming them it's so hard to name polishes you guys look how beautiful this is this is so pretty I love this all right I think that's it for nail polish questions um, let me really quickly do this um, this hand and then I'll come back on camera and we'll do the rest of the questions. I'll answer all the nursing questions on camera. Um, some miscellaneous questions. What are your prefer uh, preferred genres of books and favorite authors? I love, my very favorite genre to read is um, fantasy. So anything with magic, with dragons, fairies, anything like that, I absolutely love. Um, obviously, I love Harry Potter. Um, I really like um, kind of like mystery thriller type books. Um, two books that stand out that I read several years ago that really just surprised me because I'm pretty good about guessing you know like who did it and things like that um, but two books that really stood out to me that just surprised me one was The Silent Patient I forget who the author is um, I will put it in the description box or up on the screen or something um, and the other book was um, I think it was called The Wife Next Door. Those two books were really good and they both really surprised me. So I love to read um, mystery thriller type books. And then I also occasionally, not a lot, um, will read like a good romance book. It's hard for me to find good romance books though because I don't, you know, like young, sorry, I have to go out of frame to do this one. Um, like young adult books, are too juvenile like I don't want to be reading about you know high schoolers like high school romances um, or even like you know 20 year olds um, but then some books like if you're reading you know more like adult romance it's I don't really want to read like graphic details either so I just want an in-between there are a couple books that I've read over the last I don't know, maybe year. I forget what the authors the authors names are, um, but I'll put them up on the screen. I'll go through my um, eBooks and I'll put a few on the screen. Look at that, you guys! Look how beautiful that is. Um, so those are the three genres that I mostly read, um, but mainly I prefer to read um, fantasy. I actually just started this week reading. Um, a fantasy series that I've been meaning to read for years. People have been raving about it. It's called, this is my top coat, by the way. It's Orly's Polish Shield, all in one. Um, it's called A Court of, Thorn and Ro Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, the acronym is called ACOTAR, and it's a five book series. I believe, I read that there's gonna be a sixth book, but it's a fantasy series by, what is her name? Sarah Moss, I wanna say. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, and I just started reading it finally this week. Um, I'm on the first book. I'm about 80% done with the first book. And so far, I'm really liking it. So, um, I mean, I'm only, you know, one book in, but so far, I really like it. Okay. Any other hobbies or interests you have or would like to start? Um, yes. So, I love reading, like we just talked about. Um, I love music. Um, absolutely, absolutely love, love, love music. Pretty much all genres except for heavy metal. Um, so I have a fascination with collecting ebooks and collecting music. Um, I like to crochet. I don't do it often. I go in like uh, spurts where I'll crochet for a while and then I get tired of it and you know I'll be working on one project for several years because I just don't finish it. Um, and I just recently started getting into puzzles, maybe back in like October-ish or November, um, just started getting into puzzles. Um, I don't heavily work on the puzzles, so, you know, again, I'll have a puzzle and, you know, I'll work on it over a long period of time. And then my youngest son, Alexander, um, sometimes will do the puzzles with me. 
um, and anything that I would like to start. Um, honestly, at the moment, there's so many things that I want to do. I just don't have time to do them. Like I'm so stretched thin, you know, watching my watching YouTube videos or, you know, recording my videos. And then there's so many movies and TV shows on my to watch list that I want to do that I haven't gotten to. Um, you know, trying to do my puzzles, trying to read. I just have so many things that I'm trying to do that I never have time to do them. So no, there's not any new ones that I want to start. How are the animals settling in together? The dogs love each other. Um, Biscotti and Stella absolutely love each other. They play very hard together though. It, um, in the beginning, it was kind of freaking me out because you know, Biscotti, he's only like 15 pounds and Stella is now 30 pounds. We think she's mostly full grown. Um, she might get a little bit bigger, but she's 30 pounds. And they play so hard together, but she's, you know, like a stone wall compared to Biscotti. And, you know, he's extremely fast. So he's running, you know, hardcore at her. And then they run into each other. And because she's like 30 pounds of, you know, muscle, he goes flying and then he screams. And it just, it really scares me, but there's never been any injuries, so um, they love each other. They play together great. Um, they cuddle together, um, so great with them. They, um, let's see, what is the square footage of your house? Oh, I was talking with someone. We were talking about houses. Has how I was saying, my house is relatively small. Um, it's the perfect size for us. Um, I want to say it's probably like maybe 2,100 square feet. So it's not tiny, but it's not ginormous. It's we have a one store, one floor ranch house, which is what I wanted. I did not want a two-story house. Um, Florida does not have basements, so we have no basement. Um, so everything's on one floor. We have four bedrooms and three baths. I think our house is the perfect size. Everything is spread out because it's ranch style, so it's all spread out. Um, the front of the house has my two kids, their two, their two bedrooms, and then their bathroom is all at the front of the house. And then in the middle of the house is our guest bedroom with their own private bathroom. And then at the back of the house is our master bedroom with our master bathroom inside of it. So everything is spread out. Um, everyone has, you know, their own separate areas where, you know, we're not on top of each other and it's really nice, I love it. Um, and then the last question before I flip the camera around, someone was asking me about my rings. Um, did your husband pick out your rings or did you? So my initial wedding ring, um, when my husband proposed, he didn't even have a ring. He just said, it was just kind of like, hey, we should get married. <laughs> and then my initial wedding ring was these three diamonds um, came from my in-laws. Um, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law had the three diamonds. And they took the three diamonds and took it to their jeweler and had it put in a setting, um, just a plain setting. It was white gold. Honestly, I don't even remember if I had any input on that. Um, thankfully, it's white. it was white gold because I hate yellow gold. Um, so my original ring was just the three diamonds on a plain white gold band, came from my in-laws. And then when my, and they gave it to my husband to give to me. And then when my husband and I got married, um, I had picked out just a plain white gold band. So my original ring was just three diamonds. And then for, and my husband, you know, didn't have to pay for any of it. So it was inherited diamonds, um, family heirlooms, I guess you would call it going forward. Um, so then from our 10th anniversary, I wanted to upgrade my ring. My husband didn't want anything to do with it. He said, whatever, just, you know, go to the jewelers um, and do what you want to do. So I went to the jewelers and I worked with the jeweler and designed the ring. I told her kind of what I was interested in, but I wasn't quite sure. And we came up with the design. So I had halos put around each ring, each diamond, and then diamonds going down the side. And then I had one band made, um, you know, to fit into the circles around the halo. And then I had them soldered together. I wanted the second band, but I just, you know, couldn't see spending the money at that time. So I just did the two. And then for our 15th wedding anniversary, so five years later, we've been married for 21 years, by the way, um, I decided to have the second band made because I always wanted two bands. Um, I believe it's called an eternity band when you, or maybe it's an infinity band. I think it's the eternity band when you have um, a band on each side. And then I had the second band made and had them soldered together. And this is honestly my dream ring. 
I absolutely love it. Then for our 20th anniversary, I always wanted a right hand ring. I don't wear a lot of jewelry. I just wear my one ring. I wear my stud diamonds and that's really all I wear. And I always wanted a hand for my, a ring for my right hand. So for our 20th anniversary, we went to our jeweler and I picked out this. I love how the style is very similar to my original band. And so those are my rings. So no, my husband didn't pick them out. I picked them. Okay, and then the rest are just miscellaneous, no, the rest are nursing questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and talk about the nursing questions. Okay, so this is how the nails turned out. Look how beautiful these are. I love these so much. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I love the color combination. All right, so the last question are nursing questions. Um, okay, I'll just go down, even if they're kind of out of order, I'm just gonna go down the list. Okay, what made you choose nursing? Um, well, I really wish I could say it was, you know, a passion that I just always wanted to go into the nursing field, but it wasn't. Um, initially, when I was younger, this kind of, one, there's a question asking if I have always been a nurse, so this kind of answers both questions. Um, when I was younger, I wanted to be a veterinarian, and so when I, was starting to go to college, um, I decided that I didn't want to be a veterinarian anymore because I didn't want to go to school for like eight years to be a veterinarian. And so I decided to be a zookeeper instead. So I was going to be a zookeeper. So I was going to college for zookeeper. So I started off taking, you know, like all the biology classes I need to take. Um, and back then, like I was paying for college myself. No one was helping me. I didn't qualify for student loans because my stepfather, who's not even paying for my college, my stepfather made way too much money, so I didn't really um, qualify for student loans, and I never did like grants or anything like that. So I was paying for college myself. I was doing like one class at a time, and by time like two years had gone by, I barely had any classes under my belt, and I got frustrated, and I ended up joining the army because the army will pay for your college. So my plan was to join the army for four years and then go back to school and they would pay for it. Um, so my first job, my first real job was being in the army. And then I ended up getting out after almost two years. Um, I don't really like to talk about it because I am kind of, I spent a long time being ashamed of myself that I didn't stay in for the four years that I you know, got out early. Um, but anyways, I got out. We had our kids. Um, I will never change that. So, you know, I'm glad that I got out because I wasn't gonna have kids in the army. So I got out, we had our kids um, and we had our first son and I needed a job. Um, I wasn't in the army long enough to be able to do anything with that job. So I needed a new job. And I, at first, and I never went back, I didn't finish college. And because I got out of the army early, um, I didn't fulfill my contract. So I didn't even get college money. So I really, I don't know, it was, it was a mess. Um, but anyway, so I didn't have the college money and I didn't have my college degree. So at first I was just working crappy jobs. We had our first son already, so I was working night shift and then taking care of him during the day. So I was working at places like Kohl's and then I eventually started working at Walmart. And then I was like, this is just not gonna work. And by this point, my husband was starting to make you know a little bit more money. And so I decided to go back to school and I just was combing through you know, all the different degrees that I could go through and I came across nursing and it just felt right to me. I was like, nursing, yeah, I can do that. You know, I'm a nurturing person. Um, initially, I wanted that nurturing to be dedicated towards animals, but yeah, I can totally be a nurse. And so I went into nursing. Um, how long have you been a nurse? It's been 13 years. So I graduated in January, 2011. I went to school in New Jersey. Um, Graduated in 2011 in January um, with an associate's degree. Um, so I went to a county college and county colleges, because it was cheaper, you know, we were paying out of pocket. Um, I didn't have any student loans, we were paying out of pocket. So county colleges don't give a bachelor's degree. However, you still have to take all the same amount of classes. You still have to do all the prereqs, all the science classes, but if you do um, like a state college bachelor's program, all those classes are lumped together as a bachelor's degree. It takes four years. It took me four years 
because I still had to do the same amount of classes. However, it only counts as an associate's degree. So it took me four years. I got my associate's degree. I graduated in 2011, and then we moved to Florida in 2011. Did you have any other jobs before becoming a nurse? I talked about that. Um, do you do shift work and do you sleep in a separate room and not to not disturb your husband? So nurses do 13 hour shifts. Um, I work nights. I've always worked nights because I've always had severe insomnia. I've never been able to sleep properly. Um, so I sleep maybe like four hours a day. Sometimes I get less. Sometimes I'm really tired and I get more. Um, however, I just don't sleep well at night, so I'm a night owl. So I work nights, um, which means I sleep during the day. Um, so at night when my husband's sleeping, I will just be in the bedroom. No, I don't, to answer your question, I don't sleep in a separate room. I will just be in the bedroom, in the bed, um, watching videos, YouTube videos, or I'll read a book, or I'll watch a movie. Um, I use headphones. We have lights in our bedroom that are the um, kind that you can control, so I will just put it on night light mode, and it does not bother my husband whatsoever. Once he falls asleep, he's asleep. I could even watch my videos without using headphones and it wouldn't even bother him. So, um, no, we just sleep in the same room. It doesn't bother him. I could even leave the lights on full and it wouldn't bother him. However, I like for myself to turn the lights down soft and just relax and enjoy my time. And then I fall asleep and sleep during the day. Um, what type of nurse are you? I am a... PCU nurse, um, which stands for progressive care. So the levels of nursing are ICU, which is intensive care. And then within ICU, there's a bunch of um, specialties. There's cardiac ICU, which is the heart. There's neuro ICU, which is the brain. Um, and then there's like multi-system ICU. There's a bunch of different ICUs. Not all hospitals have those specialties. In fact, only the really large hospitals have actual specialties. Most hospitals are just a basic ICU. So there's ICU, and then below that there's PCU, <clears throat> progressive care. Um, so PCU is right under ICU. They're sick, but they're not critical like ICU, but they're sick, and that's what I do. Um, and then below that would be your specialty for med surge, which are patients that are having surgery. And then there's med tele, which those are basically the patients that are very stable and they just need monitoring um, tele because they're on telemetry, which means we're monitoring the hearts just to make sure you know they don't go into PC level basically. Um, and then below med tele is observation, which are the patients that are just here. They have a little problem that needs to be fixed and they're in and out within 24 hours. That's called observation. Then you have other specialties that are like pediatrics, which is what I wanted to get into, um, which is very hard to get into. Um, and then there's the emergency department, which is a whole separate department. And that's about it. Um, there are other subspecialties, but I'm not gonna go into that. So I am a PCU nurse. I've been one for 13 years. I first tried to get into pediatrics, and like I said, it's very hard to get into and I was denied and they said, we want you in PCU. And so I stayed in PCU. I've been in PCU for 13 years. And then two years ago, I asked my employers that I've been with 11 years now, but at the time I'd been there for nine years. I asked them, can you please train me for ICU? I'd like to do ICU. And they said, yes, so they trained me for ICU. So now I'm what's called float pool. So I float to all the units because I'm per diem. Um, so I have ICU training, although I still float to all the units. So Technically, I'm an ICU nurse. However, I go to all the units. Um, let's see, Do you, what type of nurse are you? Was nursing your first and only career? No, I already talked about that. How do I find a good hospice for in-home care? Is it covered under better insurance? <sighs> this question was asked over a month ago, so I really hope that everything's okay. I don't know if this is just your curiosity or if you know you needed hospice, so if you did, I'm sorry. Um, and I hope that everything's okay. Um, but for hospice, so if you are in the hospital or a family member is in the hospital and it's time to start discussing hospice, case management is the one that does that for you. They will find a good hospice for you, whether you wanna do inpatient, which is in the hospital, or you wanna do in-home. I think the question was for in-home. Um, 
so they will case management helps you find hospice um, as far as the insurance question I really don't know because I don't really know anything about insurance um, I have nothing to do with insurance I've never really I don't want to say don't care about it but it doesn't it doesn't affect me one way or another I take care of my patients regardless if they have insurance so I just never think about insurance um, so that's something that case management would be able to discuss with you um, if you're not in the hospital and you just want to look into hospice um, there are websites that you can I guess I guess just Google um, good hospice cares and f you know for your state and there are websites that can give you like an overview of the different hospice where you're at and then you can look up reviews um, I hope that's helpful I really don't know too much about hospice that's another specialty you have to um, be a hospice nurse um, I'm not a hospice nurse so I don't know too much about it I do know a little bit I have had patients that you know are switching to hospice um, so I know a little bit about it I just don't know a ton because that's something that case management um, takes care of or even your doctors your doctors can you know discuss hospice care with you and um, kind of lead you in the right direction um, what floor or department do you work in um, I briefly touch on this I am a float pool nurse so how many years have been now it's been like eight years now when I decided to go back to school to get my bachelor's degree I was still working so I approached my employers and said you know I'd like to go per diem so that I can be able to make my own schedule while I'm going to school and so when you become per diem at my hospital it's called CSR and basically puts you into a float pool so they float you to you don't have a set schedule you make your own schedule you tell them what days you're willing to work you don't have a set unit that you go to um, so the day that you work they look at their numbers and you know this this unit had you know three nurses call out or they never were staffed properly in the first place or this unit has you know a need for a nurse and so they will put you put me you know on whatever unit is short staffed for that day however it has to be within your scope of practice meaning that um, your highest level of care that you can treat you have you can only treat that not treat but um, take care of that or below because I'm a PCU nurse um, which is the second highest level of care in my hospital I could go to any unit and treat PCU patients or below meaning PCU med surge med tele observation basically the entire hospital I could also go to ICU and take PCU patients because my ICU is kind of small and they don't the demographics at in my hospital um, there's not always a ton of ICU patients and so they'll fill the room up with PCU patients but now because two years ago I got that ICU training I now technically can go to every single unit and treat every single patient um, and the last question is what do you love and not love about your profession <sighs> this is really hard to answer because um, especially in the last several years nursing is not what it used to be um, you know nursing used to be about taking care of your patients and building rapport with them and just being there for them being able to you know talk to them and hold their hand and comfort them and now nursing is so messed up that you have a thousand tasks to do you don't have time to sit and hold your patient's hand when they're crying you d I mean you don't have time to do anything there's so much responsibility and expectations putting put on nurses nowadays nurses are respiratory nurses are phlebotomy we have to draw all the labs nurses are this nurses sometimes are um, cleaning like we have to clean the rooms um, like they just eliminate so many other jobs or you know employees and make the nurses do it that we just don't have time to do what we need to do and so that's what's hard the hardest part for me is feeling like feeling like I didn't do enough um, that's really really hard for me um, we only have only <laughs> we only have 13 hour shifts but we have 20 hours worth of work to do and it's just it's really hard sometimes feeling like we've maybe let our patients down and you really have to pick and choose 
what gets done. You have to do the most critical, and that means sometimes the lesser things don't get done. And those lesser things, unfortunately, are things like actually caring for your patient. So that's the hardest part. The hardest part is not having the staff that we need, not having enough text to help us, to help us bathe our patients, to help us turn our patients, to help our patients go into the bathroom. So when I'm over here, my patient is, you know, their blood pressure is like 50 over 20, and I'm trying to stabilize, that's very low by the way, or I have a patient that's heavily bleeding and I'm, you know, trying to stop the bleeding or whatever, and then I have a confused patient over here trying to get out of the bed and needs to go to the bathroom, and there's no, there's no help to help them because I'm over here taking care of my patient that's about to crash and burn. And so the hardest part is being split and not having the support that we need and also not having the supplies. Um, nursing is not what it used to be. Um, I still love my job, but I also hate my job at the same time. Um, yeah, that, that's a hard question. Um, I think that was everything. Those are all the questions. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I really appreciate that you guys took the time to ask me these questions. Um, hopefully I answered everything you know, to your, you know, to what you wanted to hear. Um, if you guys have any other questions for the future, let me know. I'm more than happy to do an <clears throat> another one of these. I want to someday, hopefully in the future, do a full dedicated video to my nursing career. Um, hopefully I can do that, hopefully soon. Um, we'll see. Um, but if you guys have any other comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.